the work done by friction. That's the key. So I'm gonna make this as long as it needs to be. We're gonna to get to the bottom of this. Okay, so let's start with this. I'm gonna show you the momentum principle and the work energy principle for a simple case. So let's start with this. Um, suppose I have a block, I have some mass, M, and I put some uh, force, F, on there. Okay, and then I let that go over here, and this is my clock for some delta T. That force is over here. What's going to happen to the block? Well, it's going to increase in speed, right? So you could calculate the change in, you could calculate the acceleration and change in velocity and all that. Okay, that's fine. But let's use the momentum principle. So the momentum principle says if the force is constant, F equals delta P over delta T. That's the momentum principle. That's the net force, and P is the momentum. P equals MV for low speeds. Okay, so if this starts from rest, and it goes through some time delta t, then let's use that to calculate the final velocity. Well, let's say p2 minus p1, that's delta p, is f delta t. So that's going to be p1 is zero vector. So I get mv2 equals f delta t. v2 equals f delta t over m. And I could put in some values in there and everything's fine. And that's just the momentum principle. This is um, F over M would be the acceleration, right? So you could do this as the Newton's second law way too. You get the same thing. Okay, so that's cool. Now, what if I have uh, some force that way and then I have some frictional force pulling back that way? So in that case, if it... If those two forces are the same, then F net is zero. And so as this thing moves, the speed doesn't change. Okay, so it just moves along at a constant velocity and the net force is zero and that's fine. So that, that would be the situation like this. So here's, can you see that? Let's see, let's turn this down a little bit. Here's my little block. So I pull it like this. Momentum principle is fine. Everything's great. Okay. Okay. That's the momentum principle. There's no problem. The end. That's the end of the video. Go home. I'm just kidding. It's not the end. And I, I should point out that, uh, you know, I'll point it out in a little bit. Hold on. Okay, same situation. Now I have the same block, the same force pulling on it, and it goes over here with that same force. But now I have, it moves over some distance delta x. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not pulling it for a time, I'm pulling it for over some distance. I could indeed calculate that time and then do the same thing, uh, but it's a little more involved. But so now we can use the work energy principle. This says work is a change in energy, where work is F delta R cosine theta. And, and that's approximating some things. Okay, actually that looks sloppy on the thing. So work is F delta R cosine theta. So F is the force that does the work. Delta R is the displacement and theta is the angle between the force and the direction you're moving. So in this case, I'm, my displacement's delta x, and f is in the same direction. So theta would be zero, cosine of zero is one. So in this case, I get work is f delta x. Now, what is energy? If I have a system like a block, I, I could just say it has kinetic energy. So if I say uh, k, is one half mv squared, then I could uh, say this f delta x does work and it increases the kinetic energy. If it starts from rest, it has no kinetic energy. So I could say f delta x is one half mv two squared minus one half mv one squared, but that's zero. So now I could solve for the final velocity v2 is going to be 2f 
delta x over m square root. Okay. So there's a couple of big differences here with the work energy principle. The first is that um, this once I get to this part, I actually have a scalar equation. And so when I, when I get kinetic energy, it's a scalar value. So this velocity actually doesn't tell me the direction. You know, it, the energy would work whether it's going anyway. Okay, I, I know from other reasons that it's going to the right, but uh, that doesn't really tell me that because I get a square, I, I also because I'm getting a square root. But that's the magnitude of the force, that's the magnitude of displacement. Um, if you wanted to, you could find out the, I should probably do this, but I'm not going to. It's homework. So uh, in that first case, find out how far it went. And I really want to, now I'm not going to do it. And then uh, use that delta x and see if you get the same velocity. And you will. Okay. So the work energy and the momentum principle are two ways of looking at things. Uh, the key is if you're dealing with distances, it's easier to use work energy. If you're dealing with times, it's easier to use momentum principle. Now, for the problem. Going back to this, let's turn this down a little bit so you can see it. I'm going to pull my block. I want to calculate the work. Okay, so in that case, I now have a force there and I have a force of friction pulling back. Okay, so this is the same, it does the same amount of work. If this is the same force, then the only difference is it goes the same distance, but theta is 180 degrees. So the work done by this force would be zero. So that says the work, the total work is, it would technically be F delta X minus F friction delta X, which is the same thing equals zero. So there'd be no change in kinetic energy and it moves at a constant speed and everyone's happy, right? or not. Because there's a problem. If we consider the system consisting of the, the block and the table, as I pull it along, it does have no change in kinetic energy. However, I put the star from the bottom so I could measure a temperature and it, was, it did increase a little bit. But as you rub this, it gets a little bit warm. So this has extra thermal energy too. So where did the thermal energy come from? If this plus this does no work and there's no change in kinetic energy, but this increases in temperature and the table increases in temperature, then where did that come from? How do you make the work energy principle work here? That's the mystery. And this is where, uh, this, is, this is the part where I talk about uh, my conversation with Bruce Sherwood. Um, one of the authors of Matter and Interactions. I saw him at the American Association of Physics Teachers conference and he presented this problem to me and it was a great problem. He says, you know, here's something that we use. We use the work energy principle all the time and we want to use it with friction. But when you do that, you get into this trap and it's easy to even go past the trap and not even see that it's a problem. And just say, oh, I'm gonna calculate the work done by friction, negative F delta X. And that doesn't work, it can't work it doesn't account for the changes in temperature. So here's an analogy. The, the problem is that we like to use work energy for situations like this, a block, and we think of them as just point masses, but they're not point masses. Friction is actually super complicated. So here's the analogy that he told me about. Here's a brush, and I want to push it on something. I'll do my hand. Okay. So here's brush. This is like a block. Watch as it moves across my hand. As this moves this way, these bristles get pulled back. Okay. So if I move it just without letting it rub right there, the brush moved, let's say a centimeter that way. How far was the friction force applied? It was less than a centimeter, right? Because of the bending of the material. So because of this bending of the material, which is what's happening at the atomic level, we have these atoms in one material interacting with another one. 
And so you have to really understand friction. You have to talk about the interactions at the atomic level. The, the answer is that if I pull a block with some force, the force moves some delta x, but the frictional force doesn't necessarily move that far, okay? Because, yeah, it, it'll move, but then it pops forward and then does it again. So overall, it doesn't move as far as this force. So this does more work than the negative work from this, and the answer is that it does, this does make the kinetic energy not change, but also increase in thermal energy. And that's the problem with work energy. So you have to be very careful about friction. And in general, you have to be careful about when you treat rigid objects that are not point masses, then we have to be careful about what we consider where those forces are applied. Uh, in matter and interactions, there's a nice uh, difference between a point particle system where we can treat things as points and a real system where we can't. Okay, so I hope that helps. It is complicated.